The box rules of Scrabble state that in between placing a word on the board and the start of the next turn, a player can challenge any word they're unsure of. If the word isn't in the dictionary, the player who played it takes back their tiles and loses their turn. In North American tournament play, there's an extra twist. If the word is in the dictionary, the player who made the challenge loses their turn instead. With a full turn at stake either way, challenging a word in a tournament is a huge decision, sometimes with the entire outcome of the game riding on it. But there's one challenge that stands alone in my mind as the absolute craziest challenge ever made in North American tournament play. Unsurprisingly, the player who made that challenge was Nigel Richards, and the extraordinary circumstances surrounding it make it one of my favorite stories in Scrabble history. It's 2008, and nearly 700 players have convened in Orlando, Florida for the National Scrabble Championship. With 26 rounds in the books and only two more to go, only two players are still in the running to be the champion, Nigel Richards and Brian Capoletto. Brian is one of the greatest North American Scrabble players ever, with both national and world championships to his name and multiple extended periods as the top-rated player in North America. On the other hand, while Nigel was the top-rated player in the world in 2008 and had just won his first world championship in the previous year, he had yet to win a North American Scrabble championship, having gotten close several times previously. With Brian several hundred spread points ahead of Nigel heading into rounds 27 and 28, he's a heavy favorite to become the champion with even one win, whereas Nigel will almost certainly need to win both of the next two games. To start round 27, both players exchange tiles before finally drawing bingos, with Nigel playing crazier for 92 and Brian responding with cytosine for 78. After two lower scoring plays, Nigel draws the first blank and bingos with Jaggiest for 86, his highest scoring bingo. Holding CHILPTU, Brian's facing an 102 point deficit. But with several decent options available, including Push, Pew, and Punch, he finds something even better the beautiful disconnected 9, Sulfitic through the S and I on the board for 66 points. It's just what he needs to get back in the game. A great play by a great player. There's only one problem. Shockingly, Nigel holds the play, and after a brief few moments of thought, elects to challenge. And even more shockingly, it comes back no good, and Brian loses his turn. Perhaps you're saying, what's so shocking about that? Well, the answer has to do with two things. Scrabble's official dictionary, or more accurately, dictionaries plural, and sulfur. There are two established dictionaries in widespread use in English language Scrabble. The North American Dictionary, which is patterned closely after Merriam-Webster's Scrabble Dictionary, and the Worldwide Dictionary, maintained by Collins. With extremely rare exceptions, the Collins Dictionary contains all of the words in Merriam's list as well as thousands more additional archaic and regionally based words. With that established, now let's turn to sulfur. Like color and favor, sulfur has two spellings, one with an F and one with a PH, reflecting slightly different usage in the US and Canada. Sulfur has lots of different compounds too, including sulfa, sulfid, sulfide, sulfate, sulfone, sulfonic, and sulfuric, all of which can be spelled with both the F and PH variations in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. In addition to all of these, there's also sulfite. But here's the shocking part. Sulfitic with an F is valid in the Merriam dictionary, but sulfitic with the PH spelling is only valid in the Collins dictionary, not the Merriam dictionary used in this game. So in this situation, Nigel is facing a scenario where one more loss will end his bid for his first ever North American championship. One of the few ways he could lose control of this game would be to lose a turn on a failed challenge here. His opponent is one of the best players in North America, renowned for his word knowledge, 
and it would be hard to pick a more plausible word to be valid given the variance I showed you earlier. And yet, Nigel still correctly challenged the word off the board. This is a mind-boggling feat of dictionary mastery on Nigel's part, made even more incredible by the fact that it's a nine-letter word. Most elite players spend years learning the seven and eight letter words in one of the two dictionaries, but Nigel challenging sulfitic suggests that not only does he know longer words than that, he can also identify which dictionary they belong to. I can't emphasize enough how completely bonkers this is. Nobody else is even close to this level of word mastery. Perhaps you're asking, why is sulfitic only valid in the Collins Dictionary and not Merriam-Webster? Unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for you. The Scrabble dictionaries are full of bizarre inconsistencies like this, which is why few elite players even attempt to keep them straight. But in this area, as with so many others, Nigel is just a different beast altogether. After his successful challenge, Nigel takes complete command of the game, padding his lead further and easily withstanding two more bingos from Brian to win round 27, 477 to 431. In the climactic showdown in round 28, where the winner will become the 2008 champion, Brian bingos first with Sarying and gets a second bingo down with his highest scoring move of Sarcina, but Nigel bingos back in the nick of time with Innerve, hooking Sarcine to even the game. Several moves later, facing a grim situation with a 40-point deficit, Nigel plays the clever Hot, desperately trying to draw a bingo starting with P to hook Fot. Brian saddled with the Q and can't effectively block, and Nigel hits his bingo to surge into the lead. Brian responds with the beautiful bather with four overlaps to tie the game at 370 points apiece. But tragically for him, he somehow draws six vowels from the bag, and Nigel plays his customary perfect endgame en route to a 412 to 401 victory. This was Nigel's first North American championship. And while everyone knew he would win one eventually, few could have expected his complete dominance in years to come. But perhaps there was a hint of foreshadowing in his astonishing challenge of sulfitic, which is one of the most impressive displays of dictionary mastery I've ever seen, and one of my favorite stories in Scrabble history.